Today I'm going to show you several mistakes that are currently made using a table saw. This video is basically intended for beginners, but also for experienced table saw users that may want a refresher because you can become complacent using these saws and kind of forget how you should actually be using these saws. Let's get into this. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. The first thing we want to make certain of when we're going to make a cut with the table saw is that our clothing is nice and tight fitting. We don't want any bracelets. We don't want anything that's hanging down. We don't want any drawstrings on a hoodie or anything like that because when you're leaning over this to make your cuts, you're supposed to be standing over here to the left or the right. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But as you're making your cut, if anything that you're wearing gets caught in this blade, it can be disastrous. That is including gloves. Gloves are intended to protect your hands. The problem with wearing a glove is, is that they're fairly rugged. And if the blade gets a hold of a glove, it is just going to pull it in. It's, it's going to cut it sooner or later, but it's going to pull it in. And inside of that glove is your hand, your fingers. A glove is bad news on a table saw. Yes, you don't want to get a splinter, but I'd rather have a splinter than have this blade grab that glove and pull it in. Once we make sure there's no loose clothing, no gloves, no bracelets, no strings hanging down, anything like that, the next thing we want to do is just check our blade to make sure that it is straight with our miter slot. We're going to do that with a combination square. There's many other ways to do this. I have a table saw tune-up video that I'll put at the end of this video that goes through a more thorough way to check this. But for just checking to make sure that your saw is set up good, this is how you want to do it. You can use your combination square, set it in here, move this over so that your ruler, so that it's just touching your blade, run it all the way down and make sure that it stays the same all the way. This is going to tell you that your blade is square with your miter slot. This is one of the bigger problems for the cause of kickback is that the blade is not parallel to the fence. That is commonly really bad news when it's narrower at the back than it is at the front even by a sixteenth of an inch. So you want to make sure that's good. Next what we want to do is make sure that our fence is parallel to our miter slot. So we're just going to move our fence right over to the miter slot and we're going to lock it in place. And you saw my fence just moved a little bit. So my miter slot is just protruding enough for my thumbnail to catch it and it's the same thing here. So I know that my fence is good and that my blade is good. If you check yours and they're not good, go to your owner's manual. There's ways to adjust this fence and there's ways to adjust this blade and make sure that these are parallel. If you've got a brand new table saw out of the box, you want to check this because there are times, even brand new saws, that these are not perfectly aligned and they can cause a kickback. So you want to make sure that's aligned. The next thing that we want to do is before we cut our wood is to set our blade at the proper height. Now the blade manufacturer recommends in most cases that the gullet or the notch between the teeth is called the gullet is above the workpiece. So the bottom of this notch right here should be at the top of your workpiece. Now some people feel better running their blade where the tooth of the carbide just barely protrudes through the wood. And that's okay in most cases. The gullets are designed to one, carry sawdust away and two, bring in cool air or to cool the blade. When you are cutting a piece of wood, obviously this side of the blade is not exposed like this because it's in the middle of the wood. So the blade is going to struggle to carry in as much cool air as it can. Yes, the gullets can cool as they're not cutting the wood and they're going around underneath the saw, but they can still carry more heat this way. So what can happen is the edge of your board can burn. And secondly, it's 
a little more dangerous to run through this way to have all these carbides rubbing on the side of the wood because of the fact of the friction that's being created. So it, it is in best practice to get used to cutting your wood where the gullet, the bottom of the gullet, is at the top of your blade. The next mistake that people make is not understanding the importance of the riving knife. The riving knife is here to prevent the wood from squeezing together onto the back of the blade. If the workpiece were to squeeze together on the back of the blade, the blade will pick it up. Once it picks it up, it's on. Within a matter of a quarter of a second, that board is gonna leave this table saw and go flying across the room, hopefully not hitting you or pulling your fingers into the blade while it's leaving. The riving knife is so important and the number one piece of safety equipment. My riving knife has two adjustments. It slides in, it slides out. One adjustment is right there, and this is for a through cut. I don't always put it up here, but irregardless, my riving knife is working. So you can see how much higher the riving knife is for the through cut than when it's set down here for a non-through cut. So you would set the riving knife down in this lower setting when you are making a cut that you're just cutting a notch out of the piece of wood so that the riving knife can fit through that notch. And you want the riving knife for that cut as well because that can be also a dangerous cut if the board has any tension in it and it starts to close that gap up as you're cutting it. Once you get to the back of the blade, that's where the danger occurs. That's where kickback can occur. That's where all your troubles can start. So you always want the riving knife in place and you always want to adjust it correctly. Go to your owner's manual if you're having any issues with the adjustment of your riving knife. There is a way to adjust it to make sure that it is perfectly in line with the blade. Next, we want to be careful of cutting bowed and twisted wood. This board is a little twisted and the reason for that is, is because as it goes through the saw, you're not getting a 90 degree cut on this side of the board depending on where you're pushing it at. As you're completing your cut, the, your, the pressure you're putting on the board is going to change and it could tilt the other way. So one, you're not getting a quality cut and two, you're providing an opportunity for binding as this board changes as you push it through. So this is not a safe board to cut. If you turn it over the other way, as you can see, it has cupping. So now the board is not rocking around. It would be much safer to cut. However, the problem is, is you're still not going to get a true 90 degree cut on this side, nor is this really a piece of wood that you would want to use for any type of a project anyway because of the cupping. Every table saw manufactured comes with a blade guard. Am I guilty of not using it? Absolutely. I'm guilty of not using it even in situations where I could. There's a couple of reasons I don't like it. This protects your fingers, obviously. Makes it very hard for you to get your fingers in here around the blade and do stuff that you shouldn't be doing. It also has anti-kickback paws. Now all of this attaches to my riving knife, which is, is very handy. A very nice way it's easy to lock into place and to put on here's what I don't like about them I think these could be made one much narrower much more simplistic and still get the job done they're so wide they're so bulky that you can't cut a thin strip of wood because it won't let you get your fence any closer to the blade than about an inch and a quarter or inch and a half. So if you're cutting strips any thinner than that, you have to take this off. If you're using a sled, you have to take this off. If your um, line of sight is disturbed, you have to take this off. That's one thing I don't like about it is if I'm over here and I'm standing to the left side of my saw like I should, it blocks my line of sight. 
it blocks my sight for the blade to make sure that I'm in the proper place, which I should be because I made the measurements, but I still want to see my marks on my board. And I want to see that the blade is performing like it should. And this blocks my complete view of the blade. So I, I think the manufacturers could really step it up in this department um, and make this much smaller, much more simplistic, but yet still do the same thing that this does. It's also a little bit hard to start the board because the board doesn't want to go under it as easy as it should, which is more annoying than anything else. And it can cause you, because you're so close to the blade to get the board started, it can cause you some problems there. If you are a beginner using a table saw, I highly suggest that you use these devices for your first several cuts. I'm not going to say that you should become complacent with your table saw and think that nothing can happen. Things can happen, but there's things that you can do to keep yourself safe. The, these guards are very nice to have, and in some cases they should be used. In all cases, really, they should be used, but they restrict what you can do. So if you want to do certain things, then you would have to take these off. And if you're not running these, then you need to have 100% focus. Let's talk about that next. Here is where I think a lot of people go wrong. When you're not using any of your blade guards and you're not using your anti-kickback poles, you've already checked your fence and your blade alignment, you know all of that's good, you have your riving knife in place, everything, this is your biggest safety feature, period. Make sure that's always in place. So in my opinion, I've seen people do this on YouTube and other channels I watch. So you're, you can't start your cut using your push stick because you'll, you'll just be lifting your board up and, and you don't want to be lifting your board up while you're trying to get it through the saw. So you need to have your push stick setting in a good place for you to grab it after you start the cut. So we're standing off to the left hand side of our saw. We have good vision of our fence. We have good vision of our blade. 100% focus. You're feeding your blade through. Keep your hand back away from the blade. Once enough of your board gets on the table, apply your down pressure to your blade, grab your push stick, and you don't want to push it over here on this side because you'll twist the board. You want to push it center or a little closer to the blade. Now we're going to get this hand out of the way and we're going to push it through. Now that the cut is complete, we're going to hold this down with our push stick and we're going to turn the saw off. Here's where people go wrong. They don't turn the saw off. They let go of this and they try to reach over here and grab it. Never reach over this spinning blade. You might have your off cut sitting here that you want to pull out of the way. I was watching an Andy Bird's build video. He finished his cuts. He did not turn this off. He reached in to get his off cuts and put his fingers right in the blade. A horrible thing to, to see happen and a horrible thing to happen to anyone. He was wearing headphones. He was listening to a podcast. Probably became very complacent with the saw. Um, just not the mistake you want to make. When the cut is complete, if you're making repetitious cuts, it doesn't matter. When the cut is complete, turn the saw off, hold the board in place until the blade stops spinning. If you're worried about your workpiece because you don't have an outfeed table, you can hold it right here. The cut's complete. The workpiece doesn't have to go any further. If it's a longer piece, you're absolutely going to need to use an outfeed table. You do not want to be reaching over this spinning blade trying to save this workpiece. Nobody wants their workpiece to hit the floor and become damaged. That is the piece you're trying to keep, work with, build something, make something. So, and if there's no room for an outfeed table, you'll need to get a roller stand. I'll put a link in the description of this video to roller stands and some of the tools that we're going to talk about today. 
and you can go look at them you can purchase them you can keep yourself safe you need to have outfeed support in most cases for what you're cutting especially the longer the board so never reach over that spinning blade always be aware of where you're standing when you're cutting the wood on your table saw you never want to stand right here in line with the blade and feed your material through like this if anything goes wrong a kickback and ejection they happen so fast you have no idea it's gonna happen and when it happens this is not where you want to be when I experienced my kickback I was standing over here to the left hand side kind of where you should be because this is your best view is on the left hand side sometimes I go to the right hand side in certain scenarios I'll feel better over there it's kind of a gut thing I guess or a particular wider cut that I'm making if I'm making a really wide cut then I'm gonna go over here on the right hand side instead of the left and then the thing is is that I have better vision here and I have no way of getting hit by an ejection and in 99% of the cases I'm good with a kickback when I did experience my kickback one time I experienced kickback the blade did get me cut my finger nine stitches still have everything everything still works thank the Lord it was a good day the other advantage to standing on the left side is your power switch is right here and you don't even really need to look for it you can just reach down here and you can hit it that is the disadvantage to sometimes standing on the right side it is much more difficult to reach my power switch when you're using your miter gauge in the miter slot and you want to cut repeatable sized pieces say we're going to cut four inch pieces we're going to cross cut four inch pieces and multiple times never use your fence as your guide for your stop so we've got our, fet, our fence set at four inches and we're going to cut this. This can be bad news because there's pressure between the fence and the blade. Once it cuts off, this piece is not in a desired location. It's going to be right here at the back of the blade. It could be dancing around. It could twist a little bit and it could get ejected from the saw. So this is not how you would want to do this. What you would want to do is bring in a block of some sort that you can use to slide this up against. Then make your measurement from there. Now as we start our cut, we are not touching the fence. So when this piece cuts off, it's going to be loose down here. You can just take your push stick, kind of push it out of the way, turn the blade off, retrieve your piece and then make your next cut because you're already set up for the length that you want. This is the safe way to do cross cuts using your miter bar. And here is the last one I've got for you. Always start your cut square. Make sure that your board is tight against your fence. You may want to use a feather board or some other device to help you do this. There's many things on the market. Um, next week's video we're going to go over feather boards and some other things to help make these cuts a lot safer for beginners and to make sure that you start this board square. When you start your board square, all your cut is going to be good. If you're not tight against your fence or you're a little bit off on the back or especially if you're off on the back because you may start cutting the board wider and then as you bring it in, there's binding that can occur so you want to make sure that you start your cut square and that you're nice and tight against your fence and that you're not in any way i know this is exaggerated but you're not in any way starting your cut into the blade crooked not only is it a safer cut to start your your feet in when it's nice and straight and tight against the fence it's a cleaner cut you're going to wind up with a better job all right guys that's all we got for this time if you haven't subscribed yet i would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so i've also linked down in the description several tools that you can get that will help keep you safe 
while you're using your table saw. Make safe cuts, make clean cuts, and make your projects turn out the way that you want them to turn out. And always remember to respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.